Hello and welcome back. This is Caroline at For the Love of Crochet. I have a few crochet projects as well as a few sewing projects that I'd like to share. This is the things that I have been working on recently. I'll show you my obsession first. This little pattern here has been has been a obsession lately. It's something that I don't have to think about. I really love the design of it. I have it memorized. It's super cute. I actually like it better than the chicken that was super popular because it was so easy as well. This one has sewing because you're seaming together the chickens, but I love the fact that we're using granny squares and you can use whatever colors you want. So I really like this chicken more than the other chicken. Um, what was it? I can't think of the name. I'll list the name of that other chicken pattern. But this one is a favorite of mine and this is by Jade Sweet Softies and it's a free pattern on her channel. So that is one of the ones I've made since I've last shared. The other one I made was inspired because of the season. <laughs> so this is my little pumpkin chicken. <laughs> I should have put maybe some other color here, maybe a cream color, just to break up the orange. But my idea is this is an orange pumpkin and that's the green top and the stem. <laughs> I forgot the tail. Oh, I just, I always forget something. So I'll add the tail. What color? Green? I don't know. Maybe this dark color. So that is what is my latest obsession is these chickens. Okay, and then I, I, those were with five weight yarns. I did make a couple in my, I think it's a three weight yarn, three or two. So here's the first one, and it's a pink one with turquoise. Um, just I was just using up whatever yarn. Like I said, I really like it because I just had this little tiny bag of small thread yarns. I'm just so fascinated with it. I plan to plant these, literally plant them in a plant pot as a gift. So that is my plan for these. There we go. And I got the tail on this one. I didn't forget. So it's so cute. I just love this pattern. I, I can't help it. I, I think I'm just going to make a ton of these because I love them so much. I, and I will plant my chickens. That's so cute. Okay. So those are the two... Uh, four chickens I made, two in five weights and two in a smaller weight yarn. Now, as far as another crochet project, I was requested to make granny square shorts for my middle son. And this is my inspiration. I think I have a couple of pictures here. So if so, I'll put them right here. A couple of pictures. That is my inspiration. Now, if you're new here, you will not have seen these yet, but I have this bucket filled with all the colorful granny squares. This is a thread weight yarn, a thread weight acrylic yarn by Lion Brand, and I got it at Hobby Lobby. Tons of different colors, so he wanted them super colorful. So this is my bucket. I have over 100 squares now, so I think I can start. My plan, which I'm having trouble figuring out, Okay, so I have enough squares. Now it's time to assemble. And if you're new here, I got this at Hobby Lobby, which is a lovely stretchy um, lacy material and it has all these holes so I can crochet through it so that I can make this the waistband. I have two sizes of this, a smaller weight, a smaller size, thinner one, and then this wide one. I am gonna use the thinner one. I think it's only one inch. I think this is two inch. 
So that's going to be for the waist. So I'm trying to figure out how do I, where do I start attaching my squares? Do I start making the legs? Because my legs, uh, if I plan to make this more difficult, I wanted this as a stripe down the side seam of the shorts on the side where the pockets are. But I'm not putting pockets, I don't think. That's just more work. <laughs> Let me just get this design down. So I plan to put this down the side. So I'm trying to figure out, do I, do I start by attaching my squares to the waistband and work my way down? That means I would have to attach the sides immediately, which makes it, I think it's just gonna be difficult. So then I'm thinking maybe I should work from the bottom up but then again, I, I wanted to make these as the side panel, as the side stripe. So now I'm wondering if I should just make the granny square shorts now that I'm talking to you and walking myself through it. I'm wondering if I should just make the granny square shorts and then sew this on after the fact. Not sure. Huh. Your ideas will be extremely helpful. Please list your ideas in the comments. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling where to begin, where to start, where should I go? <laughs> so that's that. It's time to assemble though. Okay, so I um, have got a few sewing projects under my belt this last few weeks. Now, I recently went to a class that my friend was having. Hi, Robin. She taught a jelly roll quilt class, and is it, it's just to get together to sew together because basically everybody at this sewing shop knows each other, and we're just having a good time, and it's so nice to see everybody's ideas, just like we do here on um, YouTube where we watch other channels and we watch what other people are doing and then we incorporate that somehow into our own and we you know the creativity just expands we build off each other and so that's why I really like going to the classes and Robin is a wonderful teacher and I made the jelly roll quilt that is by Jordan Fabrics she has a YouTube channel and she has a tutorial for this um, and so that is what it looks like and I'll show um so this one you can see all the the fabrics are different colors different shades darkness to light and on this side she went from dark to light so that is what I did <laughs> I don't think you can see it Oh, it's so cool. So yes, it's kind of hard to get it all in picture, but I started out with the lights on the outside and then got dark on the inside and then light. This was a very simple way to do it. If I have some videos, I'll show you a clip of me at the sewing class where we you just bake you just make this very long, um, long, long strand of jelly rolls and you just keep so you just, you know, you don't have to cut. That's why it was such a great class because there was no cutting unless you didn't bring a jelly roll. But because you get to use jelly rolls, this is a pre-cut fabric and these colors were just so gorgeous. These patterns were gorgeous. And so I really wanted to see this all put together and uh, so you just make this huge long strand and then as you are sewing no so then once you get it all together then to, based upon how you how big you want your blanket then that's where you would you would just measure cut measure cut measure cut and what we did to make it easy is we just got a long table and we put a piece of tape and then we would spread out our jelly roll and snip spread out the jelly roll snip so that we're not messing with a measuring tape and we're just like you do need two people it, it is much helpful to have it with two people but if you don't you can definitely do it it'll just take longer 
but because I had my friend helping me, we could just like snip, snip. So I would hold one side, she would hold the length so that it was taut, you know, not wrinkly, you know, so that it's straight, taut. So she, I would snip it, and then I had these huge long pieces. And at the end, you know, you just square it off. It's no big deal, no stress. It was a lot of fun to make this. And I went with the black and white and the pink border. It has all the speckles of the colors. Such a pretty fabric. I think I liked this one the best, but I ended up... I'm gonna back it. I think I got this one to back it. So this is my Jelly Roll Race Quilt. I think it's a Jelly Roll Race. Yes, Jelly Roll Race Quilt. This is a free pattern. And I'm gonna bind it with turquoise, this color, of course, my signature. <laughs> Big blanket, it, it fits the top of my king size bed but it will not flap over all i have left to do is quilt it and i'm going to use my lovely janome machine my janome m7 machine to make that happen and instead of doing fancy stitches or doing free motion quilting i am just gonna do i don't know what it's called but it's just a wave stitch and i'm just gonna make rows of this wave I can't wait to see it, but I need to buy the batting. So I'm going to buy the batting at Hobby Lobby. So that's one thing I've been sewing. I may give that as a gift, even though I really love it. I may give it as a gift. Okay. So speaking of sewing machines, my Janome M7, I don't know if you know how much, I don't know how much this thing weighs. I will Google it and put how much it weighs right here, but not only does it weigh a ton, it also has like these suction cups on the bottom of the machine so that it doesn't move and you have to like really unsuction cut those things in order for you to be able to move this machine. So the, this is something that I made with scrap fabric. And if you don't have this, I highly recommend it. It is awesome. I made just a quilted mat to put underneath my machine. And I just love all these colors. Of course, there's turquoise in it, right? I love all these colors. And I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. And I just did straight lines for quilting. It's a perfect project. No one's gonna see it but me. Are my lines straight? Look at that, I got double lines right here. I don't care, it doesn't matter. And then the back of it is um, fabric that someone was throwing away at one of the classes because we were making a different type of jelly roll um, quilt and she was going to toss these. And so I kept them, assembled them together, and this was my backing. I'm not going to see this, so I don't care about what's on the back. And then I really love this bordering fabric so I wanted whatever I wanted to see is what I put on the front and I if you don't have a sewing mat where you can move your machine here's a video so it just makes it so much easier so this is something new that I made and this is to move my sewing machine with ease so if you want to um, like sew something and then you know, mess with it, cut it or whatever. I have a, this space. Or say I'm done with sewing, then I can just slide it over here. So this is something I made and it's so cool. It's my favorite thing I've made this year. I love this. And like even Annie, a lot of the quilting tutorial ladies that have patterns, they have their sewing machine on a mat and then they'll move it out of the way and then move it back and move it out of the way. Because I also have a little, um, like an ironing and a cutting mat that I can flip and have in front of me. 
And so it's really cool to be able to just move it out of the way or maybe you need to repin something. I can just move it out and repin without having to get up and go around and figure it out, pin it somewhere else. So this is one of my favorite things that I have made. Okay, now hopefully, <laughs> hopefully my daughter in love is not watching, but at my local sewing shop, again, they sell sewing machines and I bought my Janome there. And when you buy a machine there, you become part of the club and part of the club, they try to teach you all the tools on your sewing machine through projects we create. So whether it's a project you want to do or not, it's great to go because you get to learn your machine way better. And one of the things, now this is something I wanted to do. So it, I'm really excited. We made cloth napkins. Now cloth napkins are so easy and there's a ton of tutorials. However, my machine has this foot that's called the rolled hem foot and it has, you know, I have the stitch on there and everything. And so we were practicing using that. I did not think I was going to get it. This is the first one I made and this fabric is incredibly soft. It feels like the softest linen ever. It, you would want fabric, you would want clothes made out of this. So that is why I picked it for um, the cloth napkin. And I used a variegated thread to just do a stitch. And then I also used that variegated thread to do the rolled hem. Now this is the first one I did and they have curved corners. It's so cool. So this is my cloth napkin. Now you can do whatever you want. You can do an applique, you can do fancy stitches. You, know, you can do whatever you want. To fold this, I folded it in half and then I folded it all the way this way. Oops. At a diagonal. So this is popping out. And then I folded it all the way this way. I'm doing it wrong. So this is how I folded it. And then I pressed it. So hopefully it'll keep those press marks. It's not perfect, but um, it's a good hostess gift. Like when you're being invited over for dinner or someone's hosting a party. And I started to practice with a lot of stitches and I chose this color green because she is a plant mom up. Her house is loaded with plants. And so I thought this color was very pretty. She also likes yellow. And so I'm going to give that to her because she plans on having us over for dinner. Um, this is going to be in my hands to give to her. So yeah, I really liked this stitch. And this, these stitches are all on my Janome. And then I also like this one. She likes her daisies, so I tried out the daisy stitch. And then here's another one with that daisy stitch. Really pretty simple little gift. And I think I made mine 18 inches. And then the rolled hem foot eliminates the raw edge because it rolls it. It was very hard to do, but I managed and it's fine and this will be a lovely little hostess gift okay and to go along with that um, I was out of sponges so I started making my sponges and I used the 24 7 cotton and the scrubby yarn from Hobby Lobby and I made this so this is the 24 7 cotton you know at first when I first touched the 24 7 cotton I thought it was hard but after working with it, I was like, oh, this is a much smoother cotton than just the basic cottons. It's much smoother. Anyway, so I made this to go with it. 
again, she likes daisies, so I thought, you know, I'll put a little ribbon around that and that'll be a lovely hostess gift. <laughs> My other sewing project I am so, so impressed with is the Ferris Fanny Pack. So, so pretty. This was in the this was in the pile of unfinished projects for so long and it came out so good. I did everything right. I hope I got the zippers right, but I probably didn't. So I just did a basic dark blue, which is the color on the middle of these flowers. And I did the yellow on this little front pocket. And I got this zipper with all the colors at Hobby Lobby. Um, I made the strap. And these are the, this is the hardware that comes with everything. So you get these two circles and these two hoops. And this buckle from Sally Tomato for the Ferris Fanny Pack. You can get them in different colors. I got it in this brushed, I think it's called brushed nickel. Anyway, this is going to be perfect as a gift. I'm so happy I made this one. And it came out so good. And this is that Tula Pink fabric. Ah, just love it. I think I'm doing really well with Christmas gifts and gifts in general. Because what I've come to realize is, is I mean, all this stuff I make takes up a lot of space. And even though I want to be creative and make the things, I still want to make more clothes. I still want to do that. And... But learning my machine and practicing on these projects and getting better at what I'm doing, that's the only way to get there. And so I keep making. But as far as amigurumi and crochet, they take up space and I don't always have a person in mind when I'm making them and I'm just making them to make them. And while they're cute and all, I don't want to be wasteful and let them sit on a shelf either. <laughs> So I made a pile of the things I'm going to keep and I made a pile of all the things I need to just get rid of. And that is a lot of amigurumi I'm getting rid of. So not really happy about being so wasteful. I, I'm probably going to donate it, but I don't know that anyone's going to want those things. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't end up in someone's garbage. Oh well. So yeah, so I'm being a little more what is it, practical or intentional about my making? Like these little chickens, even though I love making them, the reason why I'm making them and why they're going to be great is because I'm going to plant them. This jar needs to be refreshed, but I'm going to plant them. So there's going to be a little, little chicken in a plant. I plan on gifting those and not keeping them, so it's cool. I'm very happy with making those. But I have one more sewing project. Now, I think you've seen this one before, but I hadn't finished the big piece to it. So this is also going to be a gift. So I made this table runner, and it has these three beads. This was my first um, paper piecing project. And I was, I learned to use the button maker on my machine. So I have a few buttons here. I have it upside down. All the butterflies are upside down. So there's a little button on each, each one. Butterfly button. And then this is the back. Very busy. And this is a paper piece pattern, which is the easiest thing I have ever done. Now I had finished this a while ago, however, I did not finish the um, throw that I wanted to go with it. So I, I'm thinking that will go on the table and then I wanted a little blanket that you could put on an ottoman or a couch that kind of like would complement each other. And so I made this and I finally finished it. Well, it's not, it's big, but it's not that big. It's probably as big as my jelly roll quilt right now. Maybe it's a little smaller. It is so pretty. They're called beads on a string. And then this is 
the back. And with this one, I did very cool stitching. I did the chevron stitch. And the reason why I was able to do that, it's going to be so hard to explain. But if you're quilters, you know that, you know, when you make this big blanket, then you quilt it all at once on this big blanket. You know, so you're working with this huge piece of fabric to quilt. But with this, the teacher taught us how to make a strip and then quilt it as is. So that's what I did on this one as well as the chevron. Quilt it as is and then put the quilted panels together. Well, it turned out to be a lot of work. <laughs> now, it's a great skill to know and it's great skill to practice and I did it my ripper, <laughs> my reaper, ripper, grim ripper, no, fabric ripper. I forgot what that thing's called. Was in my hand quite a bit during this process because I would forget because this was on my to-do list for a long time and then I kept starting other projects. <laughs> so it was really hard. So that is why each one of these has this white thing in the middle is because I put these two pieces after they were already quilted together and so there's a there's something I had to sew on this side and something I had to sew on this side which broke up the beads on a string with this little strip. I thought I wasn't going to like it because of that, but it's so thin that you really don't pay attention to it. So these, this was the jelly roll, the other jelly roll um, class I was referring to where someone was throwing all the way their scraps. <laughs> I saved them. Now, two of my daughter in loves are yellow is their favorite color and daisies and those sunflower colors, daisies and sunflowers are their favorites. So, <laughs> so <laughs> it's been really hard because I tend to gravitate toward this hot pink and, and turquoise. <laughs> and so picking yellow has been mm, a little hard for me. <laughs> So that is going to be a gift, lots of gifts, getting them ready. So that's great. I'm really happy with my stitching. So are you doing handmade gifts this year? Um, is there something that you like making for your friends and family? Share it with me and the rest of us in the comments because I definitely like making them and definitely enjoy seeing other projects that I can make. All right, so that's it for today. I shall see you again soon. Bye.